The Rune Factory series originated over 15 years ago as a spin-off of Story of Seasons, incorporating dungeon crawling aspects to complement the farming of that series. This game is a remake of a DS title which promises visual improvements, additional features and overall enhancements, and this special version, as it calls itself, is about to release on the Nintendo Switch. It's a busy week of farming simulation releases on the Switch, so should you pick this one up or leave it withering on the vine? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. In terms of the story you play as a young man named Micah who has the ability to transform into a woolly, a golden sheep like creature. After a mishap that leads him to fall into Sheerance, a provincial town, a young woman comes to his rescue. Micah wakes up with no memory of his past and is immediately drawn into a long-standing feud between humans and the Univere races. In order to bring back peace, Micah must work hard to create understanding between the different factions while simultaneously uncovering a personal truth and regaining his memory. The story can seem quite generic as the protagonist with Amnesia trope has been done multiple times and continues to be done in this series to this day, however particular fault has to be considered as the original game on which this one is based was released some 14 years ago. Moving on to the gameplay then, this is a farming and social simulation game with some ARPG elements in terms of its combat and exploration. Having played a few farm life games in my time but never played this particular series, I did find some mechanics a bit hard to pick up at first, as each game executes some of its ideas differently, but after some time I adapted to the straightforward controls and item management system. As soon as you begin the story, the player will have a couple of plots of land to farm, as well as the massive tree to call his home. The tree will expand as you progress through the story and will unlock new spaces to add workbenches. You can craft weapons, armour, accessories, potions and dishes, all of which require the right utensils or spaces in your abode. However, blueprints and recipes need to be unlocked by purchasing and eating special bread within the tavern. Your character has a health bar and a stamina bar which stores rune points or RP for short and this will deplete whenever you are carrying out a task such as farming or making something and once depleted will start to leech out of your health points. This can be replenished by eating or sleeping amongst other activities. You will also level up your character as well as his skills. The latter is achieved by repeating the same action and these can range from wielding a specific weapon and we'll talk about the combat side in a moment to simply walking around. After a few skill level increases, a few bonuses will become unlocked, such as draining less rune points when carrying out activities. Each year is split into four seasons, with each of these being a month in length, and the player can take part in different events alongside the townsfolk. These can be dismissed entirely, but taking part rewards the player with useful recipes and blueprints, and they are quite fun too, to be fair. Let's move on to the combat then, and the dungeon crawling available in this game. Your character can wield seven weapon types and even attack with the farming tools. There are four regions to visit, each with its own level cap and biome, and upon entering, there will be random enemies and a coloured portal. As long as the portal is open, it will spill waves of enemies onto the area, so it is wise to attack it first. This will also give the player some peace to gather resources, which may only appear in that particular area. There are numerous metals, plants and monster parts that are needed for crafting so expect to come back numerous times and there are also some boss battles within these biomes that can be farmed for rare drops. As mentioned earlier, your character can transform into a monster known as a woolly, albeit this ability is not instantly accessible, it is tied closely to the main story and your character can still carry out attacks which vary from punches and kicks to seismic pile drivers. There will be moments when you cannot be in your human form so it may be worth grinding in monster form in order to become stronger as enemies can become quite relentless. Enemy monsters that you encounter can be tamed and sent to your barn. These will water your crops and tend to the farming whilst you are away. This is very handy as crops wither if they are not watered. Moreover, some monsters can also generate produce such as eggs or milk. I found this to be a fun mechanic as it allowed me to experiment with monsters and their capabilities if I managed to befriend them. It was also a nice way to link the farming and the battling sides together. I must also say that the characters in the town are an absolute delight to interact with. As well as this, there are also plenty of bachelorettes to choose from, with one even having the potential to become your future spouse. I do genuinely appreciate how the townsfolk play a critical role in the gameplay and are well-developed characters. 
They also offer several side quests that can allow for further expansion of their stories. Quests can only be carried out one at a time, and I could not find the means to check my progress via a quest page. I could only take on a quest or cancel it via my mailbox or the town's notice board. This forces the player to concentrate on one task to completion and move on to the next one, and a quality of life upgrade here to mend some of these archaic mechanics would have been well received. Talking of upgrades that could have been made for this special edition, it would have also been nice to be able to sell products in the shops rather than just have to drop the items into the bin at the front of your farm. I know this is the case in most farming sims, but because of the more action oriented nature of this one, being able to get rid of stuff on the fly would have been much more useful. In terms of new additions for this special version, there is a newlywed mode comprising of individual exploits that become accessible after tying the knot with any of the 11 qualified bachelorettes. These are side stories of sorts and add a bit of longevity to the game. And as well as this, the game also provides a hell difficulty to put even the most experienced of players to the test. In terms of controls, I felt they were fair for the most part, although selecting a specific kitchen utensil for example can become quite fiddly and I found it easier to use the d-pad for better precision. This also affects how you attack enemies that are diagonally positioned from you and a bit of tightening here would have been welcomed. Gameplay does have some points that feel a bit old these days I must say, but on the whole it still has that classic and quite compulsive element to it. This scores 16 out of 20. Controls as I mentioned do do the job for the most part, although they are a bit fiddly in places and they get 15 out of 20. Moving on to the visuals then, and the main highlight for me was the animated intro and the beautifully illustrated environments. They are truly an upgrade from its DS roots and preserve much of its original style. Characters appear as animated portraits and add to the charm of the game. Some of the over the top attacks are very flashy indeed in a really colourful world with different biomes. Animations overall do the job well although do seem a little bit dated at times and I encountered no frame drops or bugs during my playthrough. The game utilises a map that can be opened and expanded and also marks where the townsfolk are in real time which is extremely useful when carrying out side quests. The audio has a nice amount of voice acting via short phrases which in all honesty got old quite quickly. There are just so many times one can listen to an NPC repeating certain phrases or Micah shouting the same words when attacking and the voices themselves did start to grate too. I opted in the end to change it to Japanese which I just found less of a chore to listen to. The soundtrack itself though is fitting to the overall tone of the game and some tunes are extremely pleasant, especially when it rains. Certain aspects of the visuals have been updated and do look good to be fair. And the game overall does hold a certain charm but it's certainly showing its age these days and it gets 15 out of 20. Audio in terms of soundtrack is good but the voices do start to grate after a while and it gets 15 out of 20. Rune Factory free special costs £34.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now taking this price in isolation it is one of those games that can last you a huge amount of hours and there are a few quality of life improvements here as well as a couple of new modes. It's certainly an engrossing experience and if you take the time to attempt to marry all 11 bachelorettes over a number of different playthroughs there's a huge amount to keep you invested. The issue I have is that the Rune Factory 4 special version which released on the Switch a few years back was £10 cheaper and also included the same newlyweds mode and hell difficulty. This pricing seems very bizarre, I can't quite fathom it, and it makes it difficult to recommend this game outright unless of course this is one of your favourites in the series. On balance, value gets 15 out of 20. To conclude, Rune Factory 3 Special is a good game and does hold up well to this day, albeit with a few mechanics that do feel a little out of touch and I'm pleased to have finally played a game in this particular series. It's those few mechanics that do hold the game back though these days, as well as a few other features that do feel a bit dated, such as the visuals, which although they have been given a modern sheen in terms of some of the animated cutscenes and character portraits, do still show their age. Then you can factor in the pricing, which is odd, as I said, when you factor in the price of 4 special, but taken in isolation, there is a lot to do in this game and if you do pay that full price, you'll certainly get your money's worth as long as you enjoy such games. It's a great mix of farming and adventuring, but it almost suffers from having competition from itself on the Switch these days.
Rune Factory 3 Special gets a switch up score of 76%. Thank you very much to Asdin from Grinning Wolf Games for writing this one for us. Please do check out his channel, there will be a link to it in the description. And don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick this game up, or any other for that matter of course, you can get your eShop cards via our website switchup.gg. Doing so will earn you cash back via our SwitchUp tokens, 5% of your purchase price, and you can then of course use this against future purchases. There's also a link down there to Play Asia if you're looking to import any games. Again, use the link, use the code stated, and you can get yourself 5% off of your order from there. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.